All right, we're now on page four of the review. Um, I've tried this one a couple times, but here we go again. <laughs> um, this one <clears throat> is a little bit longer, so I do have some stuff already filled in that I will just talk about as we go. Um, there are also a couple questions, this first one and the very last one on this page, uh, that can be solved in different ways. So for my honor students, you may recognize one of the ways I will solve, and then my non-honor students, if you recognize the other way, um, I just would disregard the method that seems foreign to you. So uh, starting with this first one, uh, we're talking about the length of the hypotenuse of a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. So I'm just going to draw a picture to get a little... Um, idea of what that would look like. So, whoop, not drawn to scale. Uh, this would be like a 30 degree angle and then a 60 degree angle. And it tells us that this right here is four centimeters. That hypotenuse is always opposite of the right angle. Now, <clears throat> in the end, it's asking us to find the perimeter of the triangle. So remember that perimeter um, is just adding up all the pieces around the outside. So when I'm done, I want to find the perimeter. Um, I already know it's going to be four, but then I'm going to go plus uh, this bottom of the triangle and then plus the long leg of the triangle. So I just need to find those two lengths. So again, two different methods here. <clears throat> the first, um, we talked about a 30, 60, 90 triangle in honors uh, that there's always this pattern. Uh, if you know the hypotenuse of a triangle, because this is related to an equilateral triangle, the bottom is just half of the hypotenuse. So if that's four centimeters, then this small leg or the short leg um, will be two centimeters. Now remember, the short leg is always opposite of the 30 degree angle. That's how we know that that one's the short leg. And then the long leg is always root three bigger than the short leg. So because the short leg was two, we just do two times the square root of three. Now again, if I'm finding the perimeter, that leaves me with four plus two plus two square root three. Um, and in the end, when I add those together, four plus two is six plus the two square root three and that right there would be the perimeter. Now, again, we can use Sokotoa to do this as well. Um, I'm going to draw another triangle here that should look very similar. Um, there's my 30, there's my 60, and here's my 4 centimeters. Now, again, <clears throat> remember with trigonometry, you can only find one piece at a time. So if I call this one X, uh, that works great. And I'm going to use Sokotoa. So remember, S is O over H. C is A over H, and T, O, and A. So we've got sine, cosine, and tangent. In this case, it looks like if I choose an angle, and you can choose whatever one you want, but let's say I choose this one, I have <clears throat> the hypotenuse given to me, but I want to find the side opposite. So the one that uses O and H, the trig function, would be sine up here, this guy. So I am going to do the sine of the angle that I chose, which was 30 degrees, is equal to uh, opposite, which is x over 4. Now remember, if 4 is in the bottom, then we just multiply by 4 to get it out of the bottom, and x would be equal to 4 times the sine of 30. Now if you plug that into your calculator, you will end up getting 2. Uh, so now that we know that that one is 2, uh, we could also find the other side. Um, and again, remember, if this one is 2, when I know two sides of the uh, triangle, I can find the third side using the Pythagorean theorem. So I don't know this one. I'm going to call it y. Um, I just do leg squared, so that's the unknown leg. We just found out that the short leg was 2 squared, and then the hypotenuse is 4 squared. So our Pythagorean theorem would look something like this. Um, we have y squared plus 2 squared, which is 4. This then is 16 and it looks like we're going to subtract that 4, and y squared is going to equal 12. Now when you square root both of these sides, um, y is equal to the square root of 12, but we would break that down, and we would get 3 and 4, 2 and 2, and there's a group of 2's there, so we would get 2 square root of 3. Now notice that's the same thing we got using the other method um, over here. Uh, right there, 2 square root 3. So finding the perimeter would be that same thing. You've now got 4 plus 2 plus 2 square root 3 to find the perimeter, and it gives you the same thing right there. Uh, the next one's related to key features. <clears throat> we practiced a lot with these first semester. Uh, this one's an absolute value function. You can tell because you can see those absolute value bars right there. 
so this one is going to look like a V. Now you can either plug this into your calculator using the math button and go over to number and that first one is ABS or absolute value or again we talked about you can find the vertex using this piece right here and this piece right here. Uh, the x value of the vertex is always <clears throat> um, the opposite of that number inside, so that would be a positive 3 on our vertex, um, and then a positive 5, okay? Now remember, the inside moves it to the right or to the left, in this case to the right, and the number on the outside moves it up or down. So this vertex is going to be over 3, up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's what we're looking at there. Now the two out front again tells us if it's stretched or shrunk. Usually the slope is one over one. So you go up one over one when you draw your graph, but this one has been stretched. So this one we're gonna go up two over one, up two over one um, in both directions so that we can draw our V-shaped graph here. Okay, from there you're identifying your key features. Now remember the axis of symmetry is the line that would cut down the middle. <clears throat> so if I drew a line that would cut this in two symmetric halves, um, that crosses when x is 3. So that line would be x is equal to 3 as shown right there. The domain always negative infinity to infinity for our absolute value functions and our quadratic functions. Or you can write all real numbers if you like that better. Uh, the range, remember, is the y values. <clears throat> so... We look at our y values and you'll notice that the graph never goes below when y is equal to 5. So we say um, the range would start at 5 and then it goes up forever. Um, or you can write it like this, y is always greater than or equal to the value of 5. Now the increasing intervals and decreasing, this is the one where we drew the little hiker walking on the graph. Um, notice that if I were to draw uh, this little dude here hiking, he's going downhill first. And then once x is equal to 3, so right here, he starts to go uphill. So it decreases on this left side, right, coming this direction. And then it starts to increase once we hit 3 onto the right side. So our increasing interval is from 3 to infinity. That's the right side of our graph. Um, and then the decreasing interval from negative infinity to 3 is left of that axis of symmetry. Or you can write it with this inequality notation if you like that better. Describing the transformations again, remember the parent function usually sits right here at the origin. Um, so anytime it moves away from here, uh, then you have a transformation. So ours moved to the right three, it moved up five, and then it stretched by two. Uh, jumping down, we spent a lot of time working on these lately, so I'm going to quickly go through this one. I've already drawn the diagram. It says that Sam is 1.5 meters tall, <laughs> clearly not drawn to scale. Uh, cast a 3 meter shadow, so it's drawn there. At the same time, a tree's shadow is 10 meters long, so we have our tree there. Uh, and then we use proportions to set this up. So remember, you'd have Sam and his uh, height is related to his shadow in that first uh, fraction in the same way that the tree would be related to its shadow. Uh, we solve that, we end up with 5 meters, and then we would write a sentence to describe that. Now 23 is just relating back to quadratic equations to remind ourselves what we're looking at there. Uh, there's three different uh, types and methods. So the first one was standard form, and I've given you an example right here. Standard form, remember, is the one that's multiplied all the way out. Uh, <clears throat> and we can tell it's quadratic because it has a degree of 2, um, and then moves to the right until it has a constant term with no variable. Uh, to solve this one, we either factored it or we used the quadratic formula. So make sure that you um, have notes written with the quadratic formula if you want to use that. Uh, number two, vertex form. Uh, remember, this is the one where it's raised to the second power, so it's still quadratic. Um, but there's only one x here, and it's stuck inside of this squared piece. And to solve that one, we use square roots, and you'll see that on another page, uh, one of those solving uh, then intercept factored form, this is the easiest way to solve. So if it was ever factored out like this, where there were the two or three pieces multiplying together, then we just were looking for what values would make this zero. Um, in this case, a negative 10, if I were to put that in for x, negative 10 plus 10 would give me zero. So that's one of the solutions, and the other one would be a positive 7. Uh, looking at 24, back to triangles. Uh, this one says calculate the area. So again, in the end, I want to find the area of a triangle, and I'm just going to write out the formula to remind us it's always the base times the height 
and then whatever that is, we divide that by two. Um, <clears throat> it tells us it's an isosceles triangle. Isosceles means that two of the lengths of the triangle sides are the same. Uh, and then it gives us those lengths as 7, 7, and 12. So again, I'm going to draw a picture to kind of make sense of this. Um, probably not drawn to scale, but oh, that's a little squiggly. Um, <clears throat> so here we have 7, 7, and then 12. So really, if I'm calculating this area, um, I already know that my base is 12. And I know that I'm going to divide it by 2. I just need to find the height. So remember, if our triangle is an isosceles and we drop a line down the middle, it's going to create two triangles that are the same size. They're going to be right angles. Um, and this would be like the height of our triangle. Now, <clears throat> uh, if I want to solve this height, um, I don't know anything about the angles, so I'm not using SOHCAHTOA, but I can use the Pythagorean theorem here. Um, I know that this piece down here would be half of the base, so that is 6. The hypotenuse here is 7. And then I want to find the height. So again, using Pythagorean theorem, we do leg squared. And h is one of the legs of this right triangle. Uh, plus 6 squared, because that's the other leg, uh, equals the hypotenuse squared. From here, we solve this. So we get 36 is equal to 49. Um, then we subtract the 36 over to the other side. <clears throat> h squared is equal to 13 there. Um, and then we would take the square root of both sides and uh, to get rid of the squared and we would end up with uh, h being equal to the square root of 13. So from there you just put your h or your height in here and you can put it in as a radical or a decimal. Um, if we simplify that, 12 divided by 2, that would either look like 6 square root of 13, or if you approximate it in your calculator, it would be about 21.6 square units because it's area. So either of those um, would be just fine. Last one. Quickly, number 25, identify the exact length of the hypotenuse. As I said before, there's two different ways to do this. Um, one we did in honors and the other in regular. So... In the honors class, we talked about if these are both 45, 45, 90, uh, that means that these legs are going to be the same length. And we know that the hypotenuse is root 2 bigger than the leg. So if I have 3 square root of 2 and I want to multiply it by square root of 2 to make it root 2 bigger, um, that would give me 3 square root of 4. And the square root of 4, right, is 2. So 3 times 2 I know that this hypotenuse is going to be 6. Now again, if I <clears throat> didn't recognize those patterns, um, then we would just use our Pythagorean pieces. So again, I'm going to draw that original triangle. Oh, yikes. Okay, try again. Um, we're going to draw a triangle. Okay, last try. Um, Yes, it helped me draw a triangle. So here's our right triangle. This was 3 square root of 2, and this was 45 degrees. Now, again, if I want to find the hypotenuse, here's my hypotenuse. So I'm going to call this x. It looks to me like here's my angle, here's the side opposite, and here's the hypotenuse. Again, looking back up at the top, the one that uses O and H is once again sine. So I'm going to use the sine of 45 degrees. And that's going to be equal to opposite, which is 3 square root 2, over uh, the hypotenuse. Now remember the variables in the bottom on this one, so we have to get the variable out of the bottom through multiplication. And then we divide the sine over to the other side. Um, <clears throat> that allows us to solve for x. So in our calculator, we would put 3 square root of 2. And we would divide that by the sine of 45. Now make sure again that your calculator is in degree mode. Um, that would give us 6 as well. So either way you can solve, you should end up getting that value of 6.